Hey friends, I got a quick question for you. How do you feel spending your time talking socially with others while exchanging little to no information? This is called chat. It's short for chatter. Chatter literally means incessant, trivial, frivolous talk. It's like empty calories, just leaves you hungry and malnourished. That's how I feel anyway. And I want more. I want not chat. <laughs> so I did that with friend and fellow Steemian Star O'Hara. And we talk about a variety of things, including uh, an upcoming video series that she's got in store for Steemit. We also talk about different learning styles, creative styles, travel styles, um, homeschooling, and all the courage that's needed to you know, make that decision and to live that out, and um, creative collaborations, I mean, all kinds of things. Um, but it, it, it was a moving conversation. I got moved, and I hope that you will too. So please enjoy. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me for this Not Chat Star. And so accordingly for our tight and focused um, 20 minutes together, let's dive right in um, with my first question, which is about an upcoming Steemit series that you have. And I'd love to, for you just to describe it, share from your heart about it. Yeah. So um, I'm starting a video series for, um, to be aired on Steemit called Steam Nomadic. In sort of, if you say it really fast, it sounds like Steam Nomadic, which is <laughs> exciting. Um, <laughs> basically, it's, I'm, I'll be interviewing Steemians who are um, expats, expats uh, travelers, digital nomads, or otherwise itinerant people. Um, because the travel is a very, is a big passion of mine, but right now is not a time in my life when I can do a lot of traveling. And I gave it a lot of thought a while back, maybe a few weeks ago. What is it that I love about traveling so much that I can't, you know, that I can't experience just at home or wherever I am? And it occurred to me that what it is is meeting new people from like diverse backgrounds and um and different kinds of you know different experience different life experiences or different way different ways they live life different cultures or whatever um and also hanging out with fellow travelers because there's like this, some kind of you know uh unity or like camaraderie camaraderie yeah um because you're you're both you might be from opposite ends of the globe or whatever but you're both you share a passion of discovery and um and curiosity well about the world mm -hmm. and so because i can't there's some things going on in my family life my, my home life right now that prevent me from traveling very much although they don't prevent me completely from traveling at all um they prevent me from doing it the way i would you know the way I would like to do it. Um, so I decided to start this uh, this series instead, where I talk to other Steemians and see like where they're traveling to and what kind of challenges and um, that they've faced and what their favorite part of it was. And you know, so I'm getting to meet my fellow travelers and people from different parts of the world, um, and also hopefully expose other Steemians who are interested in traveling or making a full-time lifestyle out of traveling um, to help them with that. Okay, so that's genius for a lot of reasons. Um, <clears throat> one that comes to mind, well, the first one is the fact that it lights you up. Um, a close second is the fact that it has some of the biggest payouts on Steemit, like the travel category. And so then three is, if you were so inclined, you know, you could be having conversations with some of the like most trending, most highly profiled, highly followed people, you know, like sweet as this Jay comes to mind. I mean, there's a lot yeah. that I wouldn't know by name. <clears throat> and so anyway, you're just genius. You're just genius. And you're making the connections. And then, you know, I fully admit to, you know, having 
learn some voyeuristic way that I have because, you know, I didn't even really discover it, but I realized like how much I enjoy getting into the stories of others. And so thank you for being the eyes and the ears to do that for us. I mean, you'd be well rewarded on it. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, let's see. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. Well, this is, you know what? This is, uh, this is related. But, and, and I, okay. So regarding travel, <clears throat> there was someone on Facebook who, um, who cool. he might even be a good conversation partner for you. And I'll, I'll hook you up. His name is Greg, Gregory Deal. Okay. D-I-E-H-L. And he like, um, you know, somehow helps expats with that, you know, the residency citizenship process and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so um, anyway, I was like scroll because he's been doing like a lot of live fees. And he recently did one called Travel. Or no, you, it's either a book or a post. But a big piece kind of called Travel is Transformation. And I wondered if that like resonated with you at all. And I, I just thought I would like toss it out and see if you had any riff on that travel as transformation. Well, even, I, even, even paused travel or yeah. like delayed deferred travel right. as, as transformation. Maybe that's even more true right now. Well, I think that, um, I think that travel when I'm when I'm traveling or when I'm in when I'm in a new and unfamiliar place, I think I tend to transform, and it's either into some it's either into the best version of myself or not the best version of myself. <laughs> That's a good point, right? So um, you know, in on the one side of the spectrum, you know, travel brings out your your boldness and and your passion and um, you're experiencing new things, so you're, you're, you know, it's exploratory and it's, again, discovery. And the way that you kind of jive with all of the, the differences. And nobody has, like, an eternally long fuse, you know. It, um, travel can be very stressful. So sometimes it brings out not the best part of yourself. Um, so that, so those are two, you know, transformations. I think that, you know, I, I rarely ever am so free or so stressed <laughs> as I have been when I was traveling. Now that's just, now that's just while in, in the act, that's usually just in the act of getting from point A to point B, which is why I never <clears throat> have wanted to like stay on the road all the time. Like some people, that's what it's. Some travelers, that's what it's really all about, is like constantly moving, you know, uh, staying on the go and zipping around from like country to country or whatever, jet setters, right? <laughs> that's not me. What I want to do is I want to like, I would like to go to a place and live there for six months and then go to another place and live there for six months and really, you know, assimilate to an extent into the culture or a neighborhood or, you know, whatever. And I think that the transformation for me that, um, I guess that's not really traveling. It's being at rest in different places, you know, mm. but, but the, the transformation for me there is, um, I guess it's, well, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to put my finger on. I think that there definitely is something to that travel is transformation. I'm sorry, I'm quoting you. Okay. <laughs> Being at rest in different places. That was that struck me as really poetic. Right. I don't know, it might be the name of this post or something. Um okay, but that's a really beautiful vision um of a way to experience the world. And okay, so I'm curious, like now just going back a little bit to the conversations with the other Stenians, um, are you planning for it to be like formatted or is it gonna vary from person to per from traveler to traveler? It's kind of just like what we're doing right now, except, I mean, it's just like what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's exactly the same, except every guest will be, you know, talking about travel and, um, 
different like whatever their particular style of traveling is and what experiences that they've had and uh, and challenges that they've faced etc okay cool all right awesome all right let me just see all right. So um, now let's go to this, our second question. And it's, it's been, you know, using it as a way to introduce the artwork of your daughter, Raven, yeah. who is super talented. And I, and I was introduced to her work on Instagram and I was literally an instant fan. I, I, I mean, and so they're, they're, without exception, whenever I see any of her work in my feed, it's like I jump to like it because I just, um, yeah, I just really, really resonate with her style and her expression. So can you share a little bit about Raven and her artwork and your sure. involvement in promoting it? Yeah. Um, well, my daughter has chosen a pseudonym, which is Nebula Vincent. Um, and Thank you. She, yeah. And That's she, important. she has been drawing for a long time. And I'll tell, I'll, I will tell a little story here. My daughter has always loved to draw. And there was a point at which she, oh, she, every, every like milestone that they say that doctors or the educators say your child should reach this milestone by this such and such an age. Um, my daughter didn't, Nebula didn't reach it by the age that they said um, she should. So, except for talking, she started talking early, um, and everything else. She skipped crawling completely. Completely, she rolled across the floor and then she stood up and walked. Um, she never. I don't know. She she potty trained. It, it, a lot of things she just did late, and one of the things was drawing figures. She couldn't. She. She just kept drawing scribbles, like fi she called them fireworks. They looked like just like collections of lines radiating out from the center of the page. So like fireworks. Um, and she did that for a long time. And I don't think she really started drawing figures of people until she was four and a half or five years old. And then she, it, it was very slow, the progression from, okay, I'm going to draw the head with the legs and arms sticking out of the head. And then, you know, I'm gonna give it a body and, you know, and then maybe I'll put fingers on, it'll, or, you know, it was all very slow. And none of, I don't think anybody who saw her artwork when she was, when she was little or even up to like age eight would have said this, would, would have said this child is a talented artist. But then she, because she spent all her time drawing, pretty much. She's um, home educated. She, uh, she's never she's gone to school for one year, and that was like a weird, like outdoor Waldorf school. So she's always had a lot of freedom to devote to whatever you know she was interested in. And she was interested in drawing, and she drew and she drew and she drew. And then one day it was just like whoa, like how. How did that happen? You know, she just started drawing these amazing. You can go on my Steemit account. My Steemit, are they called channels now? I've heard you know people what? say that. I don't even, I don't even know. But tell us, okay, I know for sure it's called a handle, the thing yeah. after the ad sign. So what's your handle? My handle is Leslie Star O'Hara. It's L-E-S-L-I-E-S-T-A-R-R-O-H-A-R-A. And awesome. um, every Wednesday, I put up some of um, Nebula's oh. artwork, and it's usually like three pictures. There's a lot of Percy Jackson fan art on there, and then there's some like animal drawings and just um, things that she has created. And she, you know, she produces like one or two drawings a day. It's really incredible. Wow, she is so prolific. What, I mean, do you know where she gets her inspiration? Is it, what's it, what would you say it's from? Inspiration or, well, she or likes, ideas or she ideas. likes to draw girls and she likes to draw pretty hair and pretty outfits and stuff like that. Yeah. She also really likes to draw cats. So I think it's that's, a, yeah, no, okay, I get it. 
No, I get it, but I'm going I'm going to really want to encourage everyone to check your channel out. I mean, on any day, but especially on Wednesday because Nebula's work is it's just different. I mean, it's like, yeah, you're right. I mean, like the subjects often are girls or cats, but when you see them I mean, it, they're different. There's a definite, <laughs> it's, there's a style to it. It's she really, has a signature. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, like to the point where I could be like, ooh, that's a, and thank you for correcting me. I'm sorry I've been saying the wrong, the wrong names for so long, but you know, you could be like, that is a nebula piece. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I already can recognize it. So yeah. that's pretty unique. Okay, so I got a question now about um, her being home educated. Mm -hmm. I, as someone who was, you know, very traditionally educated, um, I'm super impressed by any and all parents that I meet that make that choice for their children. So I wonder if you could, you know, talk a little bit about, about your decision to, to do that for Nebula. Sure. So I, I think that I always wanted, you know, I, I wanted from the time she was born to homeschool her. And but what really made me make the firm decision was I was in I was stuck in limbo about it like I couldn't decide one way or the other. And what really made me make the decision is that like kindergarten year or kindergarten age rolled around, and it was like you have to go to the you know kindergarten and register your child for school by such and such a date. And I was like I don't want to go talk to the school people. <laughs> <laughs> is that from your own dramatic memories well yeah it's my it's you know i have trouble with authority i have you know and um bureaucracy there's two things that really are my pet peeves so it's in like, life that's the stuff that school is made of right <laughs> so ultimately i think i made the decision because or you know i I think that, well, my husband was involved, of course, but he's not, he's always kind of like a, you know, well, you make the decision on things like that, on, you know, what, what Raven's education is going to be, like, left the, the, the decision in my hand. So I just, you know, it got to the point, like, I was like, okay, I might go this week, last week, and I just couldn't get up the gumption to go talk to these bureaucrats. Like, it was so... She was homeschooled and wow. after the first year, you know, it turned out to be, I think challenging in a lot of respects because she, because she's an only child. And I think that um, people who have multiple children have an easier time homeschooling because mm -hmm. there is that, you know, that need for, you know, a um, interaction with other kids and B, uh, get out of my hair, you know. Yeah. So for sure. So she was involved in a lot of like co-op, you know, homeschool co-ops and um, um, little extracurricular activities and stuff like that. But it's still, she's a very social person. She's a very um, extroverted person, and I'm not. I've experienced that. I've totally experienced that. I mean, I'm so, I'm so smitten. She is just so, she's so charismatic, such a charming young lady. So, I mean, so it was, it, that's probably been the most challenging part is providing for her um, extroverted little social needs, you know, and uh, that I don't fully comprehend because it's, that's not my style, you know. But now she's, I'd say for the past two years, she's been very focused on um, creating visual art um, and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I should um, also mention that she didn't read. You know, I said that she never did anything on, on the doctor educator schedule. Um, she didn't read until she was 10 years old. She could, she could, um, she knew all the letter sounds and stuff like that. But if I sat her down and tried to teach her, she got really frustrated. So I decided to back off because I didn't want her to hate reading. And I had, she had like an audible subscription. She would listen to audio books all the time. And I would read her books. I read her the entire Harry Potter series and several other 
fantasy series. And she started reading two years ago when she was 10 years old, and now she's fairly fluent. I think she just kind of picked it up on her own. Mm. So it's amazing. I, I just, you know, I'm the daughter of a teacher. So I had maybe even too close of a perspective of like the traditional pedagogy and like the, I mean, the way the teacher centered way of uh, learning. Mm -hmm. And so like to hear how accommodating and, you know, and like basically, I mean, you're such an ally of, of her and her, and her learning style. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and then the breakthrough comes, you know, like when, when the time is right. And I just, I commend you, you know, for having like the, the grace, whatever, the courage, whatever it is, um, to wait that out, not to fold and do whatever stupid It was thing. hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. How <clears throat> did you, how did you like resist? I don't even know. <clears throat> well, I, I remember there was this one time where she was going to this particular um, homeschool co-op and I think she was six years old. And um, one of the classes that, I can't remember how it was organized, but one of the classes was like a reading, how to read class, you know? And um, I went in, there were like interviews with the co-op how to read teacher prior to the beginning of the co-op starting. And um, I went in to talk to her and she asked me questions about, uh, you know, Nebula's level of reading and I was like she doesn't read like she knows the alphabet you know and um and the lady kind of she was like oh yes we have lots of children who you know haven't begun to read yet and this class is going to teach them how to read and I'm like oh okay cool so she's gonna go here and learn how to read fine and I never sent her because because I had to order this textbook this book and I just doesn't, I didn't like the book. I was like, she's not gonna like this. She's not gonna like it. She's gonna think this is really stupid. And so I didn't send her. And then, um, and then later on, when she was about eight, I had to do required, state required um, homeschool, like end of year testing, which is, we were able to do it in a very like loose environment. We had a, a testing proctor kind of just that would read the questions aloud and the child would be able to just answer in discussion style. And so I did that way. And afterwards the um, the lady and I had a meeting and the lady was like, your kid can't read. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like she could read some things. She could read, you know, Three, she was at like three and four letter words. And the lady made me cry. Like, she was like, you really need to get on. Wow. Your child will start reading. And I was, and here's some resources. And like, it's really important that she, like, this year, you need to make it your primary motivation is to get her reading. And so I left and I was like, why did that make me feel that way? Um, she made me feel really inadequate. And then I just started paying attention. The nebula and she's so smart and she's so passionate about the things that she's into and i wanted her to feel that way about reading books you know about like i feel about science fiction and fantasy you know maybe she would find some kind of um passion in uh, the literary world that would spur her to want to devour books she will probably she could be your illustrator I mean, yeah. you can already see this animation series. Yeah. Seriously, can you, that is like so badass. Talk about art, you know, art your way to anarchy. Mother, right. daughter, anarchist team, you write the text and she's illustrating it. That is right around the corner. Yeah. And you're, I mean, you're, you damn near made me cry because of the fact that you took like a hundred blows for her that, that day or a thousand blows. Yeah. Who knows how many blows, you know what I mean? But you can just see them starting to wanting to try to like, I was like that wing clipping and all that yeah. hedge shaping. It's because mm -mm. I was because I was like later on. I was like, if that lady had said the things to her that she said to me, exactly, it that's crushing. crushing. It would have that's crushing. And, and that's but you know that you know how regular that 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 that's like such a typical kind of occurrence. 
in the traditional system where they just they just want to track you and just keep going keep it moving keep it moving yeah. and i mean and they don't care about individual development and you know different capacities for for learning i mean they, they don't care about any of that so they'll just like crush a soul like literally and they say i mean like by the time usually like by the time a, a you know a child is like 12 and that's i think that's pretty old but you know if not 10 i mean that kid's like creative initiative is dwarfed i mean like that you know that will to you know to try to initiate like all that stuff is just like soon to be hammered out in you know in that traditional so i mean you spare her all of that and i just woof, you know rose petals yeah that's awesome and to have experienced her that's why i'm just like i can see that it works that those are the right choices um Okay, yeah, so I was joking when I said that, but could you possibly envision like a collaboration with Nebula? For sure, yeah, I mean. Yes, um, I can't wait. What the, th the next thing that, you know, I'm not going to push on her, but that I hope, <laughs> you always, as, as a hands-off, you know, educate, home educator, um, there's things that you hope your child will, you know, start to you know like or start to to um learn and maybe you might suggest it in little ways or whatever but you don't try to force it on them one of the sure. things for her um for nebula that i think is kind of next like it's the thing that i that replaced my worry about her reading well, now she can read and I'm like worried that she'll never get this other thing, which I'm sure she'll get at some point is um, the ability to, to focus and follow through and complete things. So I don't think kids learn that in school. You know, I think it's hard to learn that even for adults. And, you know, it's hard for me. Um, so I'm just what I'm doing is I'm trying to set a good example and trying to be very focused and and having follow through mm. and com completing the tasks that I set out and then talking about it, you know, mm -hmm. and what I'm talking, what I'm basically talking about is productivity, like the ability to be productive, you know, mm -hmm. and to be your own boss. Cause I don't, to be your own time manager, you know, cause I want her to have the option of, you know, having, if she wants to go have a job, fine. But if she, if she wants to like be her own, you know, have her own business or earn a living as an artist, she's going to need that. Okay, time to Structure. get stuff done, right? Yeah, discipline. So yeah. this is not a thing that um, we have really provided for, and I don't know how we could have because we're not structured people, <laughs> you know. Um, but I'm trying to now. But it's like, interesting because, like you, you said the word pro productivity, and she's she is generating two gorgeous pictures a day. I mean, right. that's high productivity. So it is. I understand, like if you're saying, like maybe you directed it to other areas as well. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, I'm excited to recognize, you know, like a red hot area that you're right. That she's completing every day, and yeah. that's important. Is to see, you know, what's it is important to see that um and hope that it you know hope that it can be uh, drawn into other areas and also like um more projects you know like if mm -hmm. you say you're going to you're, you start a project and you you're going to finish it right so that's a thing that has always been trouble uh troubling well not troubling hard difficult for me to do is complete yeah. projects and i see it in her also that she's you know she's all excited about a project and she doesn't follow through and trying yeah. to set like be a really good role model and set the example. yeah i, I think know. that it, that is so, no but how cool is it that you recognized you know that pattern like maybe starting to develop in her and you said let me modify my demonstration right Ooh, that is so profound that is just Man, I take my hat off to you. Um, goodness, how can I stop? Okay, but see, this is how come I love this kind of connecting. So, but we went way over. <laughs> but anyway, but the thing is, like, I want you back again. We'll do this again. Like, okay. We'll do this. Yeah.
Yeah, like whatever. Awesome. Off, should just have this, should just have this. So we should just have the Star and Erica show. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this has been so great. Thank you for um, you know being my first partner in creative crime on this. Thank you for and having. Thanks for all the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, darling. We'll check you out. We'll be following up with you on Steam It. Yay. Bye for now. Bye bye.